Welcome back, everybody. A groundbreaking new book takes us deep inside the workings of the unconscious mind. Before you know it, the unconscious reasons we do what we do melds science with psychology and offers tips to improve everything from your memory to your sleep, even smarter ways to shop. <laughs> Please welcome the author and the world's leading expert on the unconscious mind, social and cognitive psychologist, Dr. John Barge. It's great to have you here. Thank you so Thank much. You I mean, we are really um, having this explosion of research about the brain and what makes us behave the way we do. What got you into this field and inspired the book? Uh, I was born at the right time, Margaret. <laughs> uh, it, it was the cognitive revolution of psychology and suddenly we could scientifically study things like consciousness and the unconscious for the first time. And when I was in graduate school in the 70s, I spent my entire career since then, now 30, what, uh, 40 years now, right? Uh, 35 or 40 years uh, just asking the question I always had myself anyway, and I got paid to answer it. It was a wonderful <laughs> job. And the question was, why we do what we do? Actually, the question for me was, why do we have consciousness? Because back then, the answer was, it does everything. Everything we're aware of, everything we intend. And I said, okay, well, that's an assumption, but let's just see how much can be done without it. And by finding out what can be done without it, you're left with what it's specially for. How do you do that? How do you find out what's done without consciousness? Well, you do little tricks of the trade, and uh, you, you basically try to look at people in everyday situations when they don't realize they're being studied, mm -hmm. so they're not under the microscope in the psychology lab, even though they really are. And you look to see like how they're affected by holding something like a hot cup of coffee or an iced cup of coffee. Or are they different if they're sitting behind a professor's desk in the big leather chair versus a little student rickety wooden chair you know, in front of the desk? And they are. And so you put people in context and change their experiences mm -hmm. in ways they have no idea would affect them, so they don't intend it, and they're not aware of it, and yet it does affect them. Or they might be intentionally being influenced and not know it, which is Absolutely. another part of this as well. That's the mind control problem, uh, yeah. So let's talk about a couple of these things your research uh, brought up. That holding a cup of hot coffee makes you think other people are friendlier. What we did was we repeated <laughs> studies, and all they did beforehand, we had a bunch of papers, and we said, uh, we had a cup of iced coffee or hot coffee, and said, oh, here, I'll get your, your uh, questionnaires to fill out. And he said, hold this for me for a second. He got the papers, and he, thank you, took the cup back. That's all they did. It was on the way to the experiment, so they didn't even think it was part of it, and yet they made a more positive, felt more positive about the person if they had just briefly held the hot coffee versus the iced coffee beforehand. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing stuff. And so getting a flu shot makes you more favorable to immigration. If you raise, <laughs> this, is, this is a scary thing because we have a very deep, important, right now we're, we're all being told to get flu shots, right? It's a big thing in October almost every year. Well, we're really, it's really important to us to avoid disease, avoid germs, avoid viruses. It's very important to our survival over millions of years, right? Well, unfortunately, there's a metaphor that's being played on. It's very, it's very powerful to us that immigrants into our country are like germs or bacteria into our body. So we want to defend against them, build walls against them, get them out, because it's like expelling germs. And that's, that is the metaphor that's being used. And that's deeply rooted. That's very deeply rooted. It's very important for our survival over all these eons. So all we did in our study was to raise the uh, issue threat of the flu virus to people and say it's very important to be protected against that. Then they, we had them fill out a questionnaire about their attitudes towards immigration. So totally different, right? Then afterwards, we found out if they'd already had the flu shot or not. And if they'd already had the flu shot, they felt safe from the virus, and so their attitude towards immigration was more positive. That is so if they hadn't had the flu shot, their attitudes became more negative. So one of the things that intrigues me about this is that this is really applicable to things that we want in life. We want to have a better memory. We want to be able to sleep better and feel more rested. So what did you find out about the unconscious mind and how to remember more? Well, I'll, uh, or remember anything in re my case. Remember anything. <laughs> would be good. Well, uh, what happens, uh, uh, that's a great question. Um, let me take the other one, though, the, the, the one about sleeping better, because okay. this is something. I'll that, settle for that. Okay, uh, because I can't remember the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> Ironically. Uh, All right, let's talk about sleep. The then. sleep one is uh, <laughs> your unconscious mind, or actually, it's, only, it's the same mind. You don't have a separate unconscious mind. You know, it's the same mind being used consciously or unconscious. It's not a separate kind of mind. But when you're asleep, sometimes you put things off, and they're pressing, and they're, they're things you need to get done. You need to go to the doctor, you keep putting it off. You need to get something done, you keep putting it off. Unconsciously, you're working on that problem and not solving it because you're not doing the thing you need to do. You wake up in the middle of the night, and you get these troubling thoughts of the night, like pestering you, pestering you, you know, remember this, remember that, you've got these things to do. And the way to get around that, basically, unconsciously, you're being told to do something. And so all you have to do is say, okay, you know, 
that in the morning at nine o'clock, I will call the doctor and I'll, I'll make an appointment to take care of this problem. Or in the morning, I will actually start work and make a real commitment to do that. Once you do that, you go back to sleep because that's exactly what uh, unconsciously uh, your mind wants you to do is to make a concrete plan for taking care of this problem. Once you've done that, they don't have to bother you anymore. That is amazing. Now, what about shopping smarter? And this gets into the how you're being influenced by other people to make choices when you don't even know Absolutely. that that's what's going on. So there's a couple of aspects of that. Once is we all we all know, right, that we don't go shopping when we're hungry. That's a bad idea because not we buy more. To. Yeah. You're not supposed to. Why you is buy that? different things because too. we think we're going to be that hungry forever. So we buy <laughs> stuff like I'm always going to be this hungry. You know, the funny thing is, the latest research shows that we also, when we're hungry, buy more at Target. We we buy more of pens and electronics and clothes and other things that are not even edible. Whatever it is, when we're hungry, we wow. have this we have this mode that we need to acquire things, and it's not just food that it affects. People right. buy more at these other stores, department stores. They buy more online when they're hungry. So we can use that by saying to ourselves, "I'm hungry right now. I'm going to eat before I shop." I, I, we always do that at home. We That's always amazing. Eat. Isn't that good advice? All right, we're going to be conscious and uh, continuing with this program after this break. Thank you.